Alright, Oval fans, here's my episode review for last week's episode, The Dangerous Game. Pretty solid episode, uh, 8 out of 10 if you ask me. I think la uh, the episode prior to this one, I think was slightly better, but this one was good too. Lily is definitely the standout of the show right now. However, her new attitude may lead to her getting killed off. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. It depends on whether or not she heeds Donald's warnings in this week's episode based on the trailer and shuts her mouth and decides to put on an act because, well, they got to do what they're told because of five powerful families who run the country. But that's going to be what happens next week. Let's talk about what happened last week. We pick up where we left off with Lily, Kyle, and Donald. Lily is confronting them. She wants answers about everything right then, right there, and right now. And it gets to the point where she's going to cause a scene. So Kyle puts her in a headlock and Donald tells him to let her go, but only if, you know, Lily calms down. Basically, we're in a situation where Kyle is feeling up on Donald in front of Lily and she's obviously disgusted. I don't think it's a matter of homophobia. It's the fact that you're you are literally feeling on my husband in front of me while I'm right here. And I love how. After Lily says a couple things, Kyle, like, oh, that's very homophobic. Child, I work in fashion. You know how many gay people I work with I have no problem with gay people. It's just the fact that you have the audacity to feel on my husband while his wife is standing right here. And Donald, you got to give props to his actor because while he's staring at his wife, his eyes are getting watery. And you can see he's really conflicted with what's going on right then and there. But shout out to Lily for standing her ground. And when Kyle was finally about to leave, she messed up when she's like, who did the president kill? I'm like, oh, crap. So now she got herself into a bigger mess than she's already in right now. So Kyle actually, uh, you know, was like, oh, I wish you hadn't said that. So basically, Lily ends up leaving. Donald's like, I will explain everything to you later. Please calm down. So Kyle and Donald are talking about how to handle the Lily situation. Safe to say it's a matter of uh, at the end of the day, if Lily doesn't get in line, then she's going to disappear. And Kyle seemed all too eager to handle it. But Donald's like, no, I will handle it if it comes to it. But let me see what I know I can handle the situation. So then we go over to the pharmacy. Priscilla and Nancy get the news about what's been going on to an extent. They know that Richard's in the hospital. But when Nancy jumps in the car, Priscilla's talking with Sharon to get the rest of the details. Barry was the one that drove the truck through the pharmacy and he's in jail. So they both know Nancy can't handle so but so much. So they rush all to the hospital uh, while she's still there with Kareem. Lily goes to see Bobby in a motel or hotel. I'm thinking motel room and basically tells the woman that he's with to leave. And she wanted to see him about the fact that he was right about everything he had told her involving Kyle and Donald and asked, oh, are you still hurt a little bit? And then, you know, he she jumps on him to have sex. And then we move on to Kareem and Sharon. Uh, I believe it's like the fire chief or whoever telling Kareem that, hey, uh, the structure of the building is still in good condition. Um, you can ask so and so for a second opinion, but I feel like the foundation of it's still good. So you wouldn't have to worry about anything collapsing. And it comes down to the fact that, you know, he wants to take Sharon home. Well, well, not home, but basically to Nancy and Richard's house to get the rest of her things. So because with everything that's going on, she knows it would not be a good idea to stay at that house. And um, she's still in love with Barry. And I didn't want him to go to jail. And it's like it it's almost like she's putting a lot of the blame of herself on her when really she is wrong for cheating on Barry. But at the same time. She isn't responsible for how Barry reacts to situations like that because she was not the one that made Barry drive the truck through the entrance. She wasn't the one that made Barry get out of the truck to uh, attack Kareem. And then from there, that led to the gun going off, leading to Richard being shot. But they can't leave at the moment because Kareem needs to seal up um, the medicine and whatnot because if, you, if he left the pharmacy the way it was, people would go in there and loot it and whatnot, which is sadly too relatable to what's going on in the world right now. So Sharon says, I'll help you out. And then after that, they'll go, you know, get her stuff. Uh, Hunter goes into the bedroom while Victoria is getting ready for bed. 
and she notes how serious he's looking because I haven't seen you make a face like that since my father had to bail you out of your gambling debt. And uh, she just said, you know, I didn't do anything but beat Denise to an inch of her life and I threatened her, but I didn't do anything else to her. So basically, in interrogation mode, Hunter feels that, you know what, Victoria really didn't do anything to her or she doesn't know what's been going on with Denise. And then from there, she says, you need to go check on your kids. So that would be good to see because we still haven't seen a one-on-one -on -one scene between Hunter and Gail. Uh, Nancy and Priscilla arrive at the hospital. And well, hospital policy, they got to show insurance information to get the information they want. Richard still in surgery. There was a gunshot wound to the chest. And then they go to the waiting room. Uh, Priscilla steps out for a second. Once again, very careful about what she says to Nancy because she knows Nancy cannot handle the stress. Uh, she calls Sam and tells him what's been going on and um, about, you know, Richard getting shot, Barry driving the car through the pharmacy. It, it's just a big mess. Uh, we go back to the hotel room or motel room, wherever Lily and Bobby are in bed. And she talks about how I don't want you. I just needed to have sex with a man. <laughs> and basically she wants to go to her house to get her stuff so she can leave Donald. Bobby's like, should I go with you? And she doesn't want it. Basically, Bobby was pulling a Kareem and Sharon where it's like, both women want to go to the place they're living at to get their stuff so they can leave, but they don't want the help. And she is told by Bobby, hey, that phone I got, I have, or the one I gave you, make sure you keep it hidden. And if you want to contact me, only use that phone. Uh, then we go back to Donald and Hunter in the Oval. Um, and Hunter talks with Donald about how Victoria didn't do it. And uh, next thing you know, a news story about Denise's death comes on and then they go to commercial break because, well, it's BET. So anytime anything exciting is happening, they go to commercial break. And we go back to the hospital. Nancy and Priscilla are sitting there in the waiting room. Um, she's stressing out, obviously. Then the um, person at the front desk comes in to let them know that Richard's still in surgery and um, Priscilla and Nancy pray. Uh, Victoria sees the news report on Denise and it turns out uh, she died a gruesome death in a rough part of the neighborhood where a lot of violence has been happening lately. And it turns out she was a convicted prostitute as well as child trafficker. And it's like that sounded a lot like they were using a profile for Ruth in place of Denise. Like I'm not saying Denise is a saint, but I mean, was she a prostitute? Was she into child trafficking? Was her boutique a front for everything? Well, I'll have to do a video on that. But in any case, Victoria is disgusted. And while Donald and Hunter are talking, you know, Hunter's trying to find out more information about what happened. It's like, is there any footage? And it's like, no, there's no footage in the residency. So basically, there is camera um, footage of outside of the residency. And Kyle did not move from his spot, basically confirming Kyle was not the one that killed Denise. He was standing outside of the door the entire time. And... Victoria bursts into the room, tells Donald to leave, and she is pissed off that if anything comes back to the family about Denise, then she will turn Hunter over to her father. And then she walks out again. Kyle is saying sorry to Donald. like, nope, no, this is not the time. No. And it's like, I will handle Lily if it comes to that. Then he goes back into the oval to talk with a Hunter. And Hunter's worried, but not about Victoria, but about his father-in-law. So he's, again, he's like, are you sure this isn't going to come back to me? No, sir. Okay. So Barry is taken to the detective's office. I believe his name is Jake. Jake chews him out about the fact that after everything your godfather, Sam, did to get you out earlier today, a few hours later, you pull a stunt like this. Are, are you on drugs or, or is something wrong with you? And Barry wants to know about his father, and he's taken away and locked up. Jake calls Sam about everything that's going on and Sam just arrived at the hospital and he's like this time he's not getting out but Sam says you know I'll take the fall if necessary like no we can't afford for you to uh, we can't a, a lot of people have lost enough already and you're not going to be in you're not going to lose your position over what this kid's doing but he's like you know what fine I'll see what I can do for him and uh Sam comes in talks with Nancy explains what happened uh with um Barry being in jail and why Richard was shot and Nancy freaks out saying I can't hear any of this I'm done I can't take it anymore so at this point it's just a matter of whether or not Richard is going to make it and then in the final scene Lily comes home while Donald's waiting for her she's packing up her stuff he's trying to explain everything that's going on she's threatening to tell the press about everything between him cheating and you know the president shooting someone or killing someone and he talks about how 
I work for some powerful people who put us in this position. You cannot leave. He's trying to beg and plead with her. And it's like, I'm bisexual. She gets on him pretty much trying to see if he gets an erection and he doesn't. And then while he's still trying to plead with her and she's about to leave, he grabs her, throws on the ground and starts to choke her. And that's the end of the episode. So Lily is not dead. If you watch the preview for next week, you know, Lily is not dead. Just throwing that out there. But overall, this was a solid episode. I, again, think last week's was a little bit better, but this one definitely set up things for what's to come. Um, is Richard going to make it? Is Hunter going to talk to his children? Will the Denise situation really not come back to bite him? Um, is Lily going to play the act of being Donald's wife for the sake of keeping herself safe? Because, well, as Donald said, you know, if you file for divorce, if you leave, it is not going to be good for you. That's not a threat. That's a promise because these powerful people might end up hurting Donald and Kyle. I, I don't know. There's just a lot of people... It's like a domino effect when the first one tips over being Lily, that could affect everyone else, which makes the Lily story so interesting because for the first half of the season, she felt so detached from the rest of the other characters and their storylines. But now it's like because of her actions, if she decides to fall out of line, so to speak, that could affect a lot of the other characters as well. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But uh, let me know what were some of your favorite scenes from the episode? Uh, what do you think is going to be happening this week and uh yeah it, it, this is insane but make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss out when i post new content follow me on social media links are in the description below uh shout out to the patrons over on patreon you can join in for as little as one dollar a month or if you'd like to make more of a one-time donation feel free to do so on paypal or cash app but guys thanks again for tuning into this video i definitely think yeah lily's story was the standout I would say Hunter's, you know, investigation about Denise was second. And then like the lowest tier story was uh, Nancy and Priscilla getting to the hospital, finding out about Richard. So once again, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll talk to you all later.